here in Wikimania. Um, you might refer me as Felix the Cat, but I would say I'm more like a Felix the Bat guy because I'll be keeping the time and having everything, you know, stay on schedule. Uh, here we have our two presenters already on the stage, uh, Mr. Lodivek Glov and his partner, Nico Eber. And they will be presenting a wonderful topic and very insightful information. So now I'll give the stage to you guys. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So welcome everyone to the Cool Projects. We're going to try to give you a little bit of inspiration today. And uh, of course, uh, this is Nicole Eber. She works for Wikimedia Deutschland and uh, she works in the international department there. And one of her jobs is, of course, to help chapters keep communicating with each other. Um, but it's only one of the many things. I'm Lodewijk Galauf. I'm a volunteer with Wikimedia for quite a few years now. And um, I've been running this presentation as well uh, since 2011. So first of all, we're going to talk, well, the, chap the presentation is called Wikimedia Chapters because that is what it started like in 2011. Things changed a little bit since then. I was just too bored to change the presentation topic um, for, this, uh, for this occasion, um, because Wikimedia chapters have been around since 2004. They are independent organizations uh, made up by Wikimedians, mostly volunteer run, and um, their scope is geographic. So most of them are, uh, are related to a specific country. For example, you have uh, Wikimedia, uh, Wikimedia India, and you have uh, Wikimedia Argentina, and they have a very specific country uh, where they do their activities. And it's this, uh, these activities what we're gonna talk about a bit. They have a similar mission as the Wikimedia Foundation and the Wikimedia Projects. They're all here to, um, to make sure that the sum of all human knowledge gets collected and gets to the people. However, since 2012, we have expanded the model a little bit as in our movement, and we have also introduced thematic organizations which are trying to do the same, but not with a geographic scope, but with a thematic scope. Uh, we currently have one of these organizations, Amicale Wikimedia. Anyone around? Well, we would have noticed they're usually pretty noisy if they're here. Um, and we have six Wikimedia user groups. Um, they also have a similar mission, and we, uh, user groups have a lower threshold and are usually a little bit more informal. Well, that's just a very quick uh, overview of what the chapters look like. I mean, this was what the chapters looked like at the first Wikimania in Frankfurt. I mean, we had a little blob in Europe, and that little blob of South America, that's actually part of France, so don't be too concerned with that. <laughs> um, and this developed over the years, and you see that the blob in Europe is growing and then also spreads to other continents. This is where Hong Kong was founded, Wikimedia Hong Kong. And then you see that, well, the big countries with, are also joining. And finally, this is what the Wikimedia chapter world looks like right now. All these blue areas are covered, with, uh, are covered by chapters in, in one way or another. Some very active, some a little less. And uh, this is how we try to uh, make the Wikimedia mission scale a bit, because uh, giving the sum of all human knowledge to every single human being, it's a pretty tough job. So back to the cool projects, because what are cool projects? Well, I have been trying to collect cool projects since 2011 at least. Um, we collect, I collect them through a survey. Uh, Nicole helped uh, very well this year. And last year I was very much helped with Deror. You should also be somewhere here. There you are. And uh, we try to collect all the cool projects by asking these chapters and these organizations, what did you do in the past year? between one Wikimania and another. What are the things that you are proud of that you want to share with the rest of Wikimedia? And uh, we limit ourselves to three projects per, present, per organization to make sure that we get a good spread, a good geographic spread, a good topical spread. And um, this year we got 34 organizations to respond to our survey, and this resulted in 76 cool projects. That's, that's pretty amazing. Uh, it was a hard job, but thank you very much for submitting all those projects because I had a wonderful read and I think you uh, also enjoyed it very much. Um, however, we do not have the time to present every single one of them. We just will run you through. 
However, we do try to give you a maximum exposure of coolness. Um, and we made a selection of about 40 different projects, and we will try to run you through them in 60 minutes. So hold on to your seats and try not to get blown away. We did prepare a handout for you, because in one minute per, chap per cool project, we can only tell so much. There is a URL at the, at the right column of it, and you can find more information about each project on that URL. Don't try to access every URL at the same time because you might bring down the server where it's located. Just do it afterwards. And Nicole. Okay. Cool. Is my microphone working? Yes, it is. So, hello, good to see you all here, and uh, let us take you on a trip around the world and back now. And we are starting in Denmark with uh, Wiki Wednesday, which takes place on every first Wednesday of a month. And it's more like an informal meetup for Wikipedians. And it's, it's happening in different locations in Copenhagen, so no place set. And um, they're doing different things. They're doing, having meetings and hanging out, but they are sometimes also combine it with different activities, like, for example, visiting museums. And they are already doing it since 2010. And sometimes new people come together and sometimes not. And um, they said that the most important thing is to do it regularly, so do it every month, no matter if people show up or not, to have it really uh, on a regular basis. The, the Writing Bootcamp, which is taking place in Taipei, is a monthly meetup for Wikimedians, uh, or for, for also for new editors, because uh, Wiki, Wikipedians train others how to edit Wikipedia. And there are no uh, partnerships in the bootcamp involved, and um, they are—they were having it in a cafe session, uh, cafe space, but they said that the, it was too loud and they did not really have the chance to to talk a lot. So they moved to a quieter play, uh, pay, uh, place. And um, in in the last 12 months, 99, um, 99 different people participated in all the meetings which is quite nice, and um, they also gave the tip. So if no one shows up, just use, make use of the time that you are there and write some, just write something on Wikipedia and use your time and don't, don't be frustrated if no one shows up because you can really use the time for cool things that you do. And now we're going to Poland, to the Wiki, S Wiki Expedis Expeditia. Um, Expedition, okay, it w w which uh, took place in August uh, 2012, so right after ye last year's Wikimania, is it right? Yes. And it took place in northeastern Poland and um, had 11 people involved and they, built, they made, uh, made two teams, one red team and one blue team, and one team went around the region by car and the other had a camper and took bicycles with them. and. Um, yeah, it looks like they, they kind of really risked their lives to take photos there. <laughs> and um, um, the, they, they managed to took almost 4,000 pictures within that time. <coughs> and they, they gave the tip to, that it's really good to work together with local guides um, because they really know the places that you should go and know secret places and whatever. And they also said that uh, you should bring umbrellas. It's not only not uh, only important in Hong Kong to bring umbrellas, but it sometimes also rains in Poland. So um, now we're flying over to Barcelona, where they where Wikimedia Mit, uh, Amical Wikimedia held a 35-hour editathon um, in in April this year. It was the uh, 35th anniversary of the foundation for Miro, and it took like uh, 35 hours, the whole marathon. It was divided into uh, diff in d different shifts, and I've read that uh, one person at least managed to stay up there for 17 hours, and they had 18 people participating in the, in the marathon, or in the, yeah in the editathon, and um, they also organize side activities to stay focused, like you see probably here in the picture. I mean, we can all try to do it here as well, if we like the yoga part of that, and um, some other things like midnight tours and performances, and they managed to write 150 articles um, during that editathon. And um, they also celebrated the 400,000th article on their Wikipedia dur during the, the meeting. 
Then there's another marathon which took place in Helsinki uh, in partnership with the Kiasma Museum of Contemporary Art. It took 24 hours and um, it was not divided into shifts. So people were like supposed to stay there for a whole day. And um, the goal was to improve articles about contemporary art. And the program also included, of course, writing, but also they had a program with introductions and then they had guided tours and um, shared experience with, um, with each other. And um, they had 15, 50 participants from which 80% were new, which is a nice number for such, an such a long editathon. And um, yeah, not everyone was really able to stay awake, but they, at least they stayed on site, so. <laughs> Yes. Can you actually read the, read the things there or sh shall we zoom in more? Okay. Then a, a project from the Netherlands which is called Wikilove Sound. So the, they came up with the question, so how, did, how does our world sound and how sounded it like a few years or 50 years ago? So who of you remembers how a modem sound is like and who can probably make it here, yes? <laughs> and but but for example, your children probably they will never, hopefully never be have to work with a modem. So um, Wikimedia Netherlands decided to uh, they they um, they um, received a donation of two uh, two thousand old sounds, and they are also doing workshops uh, where they record where they record sounds and where they. Um, yeah, like doing mixing and audio editing. And um, yeah, the, the important thing is really to reserve our world for future generations. And they experience that it's less popular to work with, uh, to upload sound files on, on the Wikimedia project, that people really love to, to work with images, but not that much with sound, with sound, and uploading is quite complicated. But for example, everyone who has a smartphone is really, can really upload sounds with their smartphone, so the quality would be good enough. You don't need fancy equipment to participate. And then there's the Murbius uh, radio program from Wikimedia Mexico. It's a weekly radio show, and they are doing it in collaboration with the Mexican radio station, uh, Ibero 90.9, 90 which is uh, the, like campus radio from their university, and they of course address a young, audi young audience. And in their show, they kind of combine, um, yeah, like uh, seemingly disjointed topics within Wikipedia um, with each other. So you all probably have experienced the feeling of uh, getting lost in when reading Wikipedia. So coming from one article to the other, and then the next topic and the next topic, and this radio show really plays with, with these things. So, uh, for example, how can you come from Isaac Asimov to Radiohead? And they, they use these, um, these like, um, like uh, articles and tell, uh, talk about the topics in their, in their radio show and really show how, how cool Wikipedia is because you can also combine it with pop culture and it really is a nice uh, way to, to show people which contents um, Wikipedia covers, for example. Oh. And yeah, <laughs> that's how it look, looks like. It's a one hour show, yeah. And I think I'm handing over to Lodewijk yeah. now. Thank you very much. Um, so this is a totally different type of project, of course, again. Um, in Dhaka, the Bangladeshi Wikipedians organized a workshop and um, they thought to collaborate with the local university there, the University of Information Technology and Sciences um, in Dhaka. And uh, to, uh, well, maybe to their surprise, I'm not sure if they actually expected it, but they got 150 students showing up at that uh, workshop for two hours. Um, it sounds like a uh, a kind of workshop that you can rather well replicate in other countries as well. It's not an extremely complicated, and what worked very well is that they had the vice chancellor of the university uh, to, uh, uh, to um, open the event, which gives it a lot of credibility as well towards the students. It uh, shows to the students that the university cares, and it shows to them 
um, that important people care about it, uh, about knowledge and about contributing to knowledge. Um, so they didn't only give a general uh, introduction, like what is Wikipedia, but they also explained to them how to edit, etc. Of course, a topic that returns in many different projects. Um, in Canada, they took a different approach. Uh, in the, well, it sounds French, that is true, because there is a part of Canada that speaks French, if you didn't know. Um, and uh, in, uh, they, they let three different universities collaborate in three different cities. And that is, of course, pretty tough. So they did that mo uh, partially online. And they invited these students on all different levels. They had bachelor students, master students, uh, but also PhD students uh, in the physics departments to contribute to Wikipedia articles, very, very focused. So they had an eight hour, uh, or they had a seven hour time span, including uh, some dinner. Um, and they wrote articles together in a way that uh, the quality would really go up. So it was not so much focused on quantity, on getting lots of new articles, but really trying to get the quality of very specific articles to a much higher level. Um, however, uh, as you all know, as you, if you are a Wikipedian, uh, writing articles to such a high level is pretty tough, especially if you have to bother about things like references. Um, it's a very complicated part. So. Uh, for, on one side, they had the experts for the content, and on the other side, they had some Wikipedians who were trying to help out um, with, uh, with the referencing stuff uh, so that the experts didn't have to uh, worry too much about it or could at least learn about it. In France, they uh, organized it. Uh, they also try to reach out, um, but they do it in, a, again, a different way. They try to make it a little bit more uh, continuing. Um, so they have a wiki permanence, a permanent presence, uh, basically, in uh, different cities all over France. They organize regular workshops in a way um, that people can discover Wikipedia and Wikimedia and uh, can get to know um, the projects in a better way. They, can, uh, they organize it in a way that is with a very low threshold, that it's easy to access and easy to participate. Um, that's why they do it in a local public space. Uh, local volunteers help. And uh, it's usually uh, what somewhat smaller groups. They already do it since 2011, but as I understand it, in the last year it took off in more and more cities. Um, their tip, uh, if you want to organize something like this, is to try to bring regularity into the scheme. Make sure that it happens every week, every month, every two months, whatever. But people can count on it that's, and can plan on it so that they know in one month's time Oh, I already have, uh, I already can res make a reservation in my uh, agenda, and I can make sure that I will be there if I cannot make it this time. In the UK, they focus this on a very particular topic, an outreach event. They focus it on, um, on women scientists, and they uh, did that on Ada Lovelace Day. And they uh, did that in collaboration with the Library of the Royal Society. Uh, they organized both an editathon and a panel discussion. And especially that combination was for them very attractive and very interesting. Uh, they had about 16 attendees, which might not sound like a big group, but uh, especially because of the focus, that is, of course, uh, still interesting. Uh, they, had, uh, they needed four trainers for the 16 attendees, so you see like a one at four ratio, uh, which is uh, not too bad at all. Um, and the focus was uh, on articles about women scientists, so uh, that way they were trying to reach a very particular group of interested uh, uh, potential Wikipedians. Their tip is to bundle events, because people who might not be interested in the editathon might be interested in the panel and then just stick along for the editathon or the other way around. So that way you get more participants and more people uh, uh, attending your, uh, your event. And the outcomes might be more interesting. In uh, Yerevan, Armenia, they organized a uh, more like a big conference, a big national conference with uh, 250 participants, which is, uh, well, I can tell you, I tried to organize it in the Netherlands a few times, and 250 is a very big group to organize something for, a two-day conference. And uh, the focus was on spreading the word, but also of reactivating and activating existing editors. So some kind of a team building exercise, so you like. Um, one of the outcomes was that Wikimedia Armenia was founded, and that was partially because of how the program was set up. Um, the topics included, uh, well, of course, the Armenian Wikipedia, which is their local edition, so it makes a lot of sense. 
um, but also how, what kind of potential chapter activities you can organize. That way they informed the volunteers that were present and they got their enthusiasm going. Uh, another thing is why th how and why things work. So not just telling them that things work, but also trying to explain to it and have discussions how things uh, work and how it can be improved perhaps. The program had both national and international speakers so that um, uh, there is again some kind of extra level of credibility. I think Ting Cheng and Bense, uh, I, I think Ting is not here, but um, Ting was at the time the uh, uh, board member and uh, he was uh, as such present, so that gives an extra little bit of touch to uh, such an event. Uh, their tip is to not only organize one of these big meetings, but organize smaller follow-up events so that, uh, so that the, um, the attention keeps captured and that people keep motivated also after the event. And uh, Wikimedia Deutschland um, tried to help with uh, different chapters to influence European policies. It's something totally different, but still very important. Sounds boring, politics, uh, policies, laws, regulations. But it's very important because as Wikimedians, we bump into it day, every day, every day again. If the copyright laws are screwed up in Brussels, lots of countries are uh, facing the consequences. Um, so that is why um, uh, uh, several European chapters joined forces and uh, they came together in Europe, uh, in Brussels, and they tried to talk with each other what are currently the most important issues that we should pay attention to. What can we try to influence in a positive way so that Wikimedia becomes uh, more accessible and can remain accessible as well? Uh, what are potential dangers that are coming up and how can we try to uh, avoid that? Um, they, we had only 11, I mean 11 participants, but they res represented a wide variety of chapters. And this is one of the very few multi-chapter collaborations. We don't have so many of them. I think this is a good example and a very typical example where uh, collaborating with the multiple chapters can really help you forward. Because uh, by one chapter you can write uh, a letter to uh, the European Commission. Very interesting, but if you do it with, from multiple countries, that usually has a bigger impact. Uh, the, the outcomes were that uh, a focus was put on the freedom of panorama, public domain and orphan works. Um, orphan works are works where the author is unknown, uh, but there is still copyright on it. So even if you wanted to pay for it, it would be impossible to use the image, to use the work. Well, it's all very technical, I won't bother you to further with details, um, but the other outcome was that uh, there will be a Wikimedian in Brussels. I'm not sure if Dimitar is around here somewhere. Again, no, but we, we oh, should we have pulled more people in. Um, and uh, Dimitar is uh, also around at this conference. Uh, he will be happy to tell you more about it. Um, and uh, they are trying to monitor uh, the issues better that way and also try to inform and coordinate the chapters themselves. Another activity uh, by Wikimedia Germany is uh, an, an attempt instead of um, of influencing uh, the politics. They're trying to inform the Wikimedians of what is happening. And as you all know, well, there are lots of mailing lists and we have lots of messages and lots of announcements and lots of newsletters going around in this movement. And what, uh, what they try to do in this weekly newsletter is try to summarize all that information to small captions, to small bits of digestible information and just give an introduction to every topic that is at this point very important. Um, so it's, it's created both by community and by staff, it's, um, and they try to send it via mailing list uh, and inform the German-speaking community of events that happen all over the world. Uh, their tip is if you want to write a newsletter, and it probably doesn't really matter what kind of new newsletter, try to fill it constantly, don't write it just before the deadline because that actually takes away the whole advantage of doing it on a wiki and being able to edit it all together with lots of people. And um, the previous project, the Wikimedia Woche, was the one of the projects where I put, uh, was able to put a squirrel image uh, inside the presentation. I was actually planning to use more of them, but okay, didn't really work out, so. Now I'm talking about the annual cleanup contest, which is organized by Wikimedia Hungary. And um, it was a contest uh, lasting for three weeks. 
and it uh, was um, initiated to solve flagged problems in Wikipedia articles. It was an online contest and it was uh, open for all editors on the Hungarian Wikipedia. And um, they, it, it didn't cost that much. They had prizes where people could, the winners could choose from a list of prizes. And I think the first prize was like 100 euros and the, um, the others a little, little bit lower. And uh, the, outcomes the outcome was that it directly affected 0.5% uh, uh, of all the articles on the Hungarian Wikipedia in 2013. And um, yeah, oops, here's their, their, the organizing page, which also lists the, the prices. And um, their tip was because uh, those, sol uh, the, those flag prob solving those flag problems is some kind of an unpopular task and they came up with a solution just to put up a small contest uh, to uh, motivate people and also to give out prizes to improve the satisfaction of the people who did those unpopular popular tasks. Vila Movice, this is a project from Wikimedia Poland and um, it is about the Vila Movice Villa Movian language, there are only around 50 speakers left um, and the language is like largely unstudied and um, seven Wikimedians were involved who um, have been working together with jo Josef Gara. Um, he was a writer and poet and he rec recorded uh, more, a few thousands of words um, in this language to preserve it for future generations. And um, they had an event where you can see a few, this image, for example, and the oldest participant that was Joseph was 77 years old and the youngest was 17 years old. So a variety of generations there. And yeah, the tip um, they gave us was that older people get tired more, e more easily. So you really need to um, have breaks in between and it really took, it took quite long to record all those thousands of words. Then we're going over to Israel. Wikimedia Israel did a project, Kefar Kama, with the middle school. Um, they teach uh, students in the age of 14 to 15 about how to write on Wikipedia in the Western Adige language. And this language also has only a few speakers, like one, uh, 300,000, and um, from which 7,000 7, live in Israel. And they, um, they created a Wikipedia in the, in the incubator, and or, there is a Wikipedia in the incubator, and they managed to write articles, like 75 articles there. 75 students were involved. And um, what they experience during their sessions is that it's very hard for Wikipedians if they have to take care of the discipline of the students. Of the, you know how students can sometimes be and they are allowed and doing uh, things uh, that they shouldn't probably do during classes. And it should not be of the responsibility of the Wikipedians to tell them, please don't do that. That should be the responsibility of the teachers. Yeah, luckily this audience is much... Uh Quieter. <laughs> um, the, uh, there's a project from Wikimedia Serbia. The, it is called 100, uh, 1001 Arabic Words. And um, it is meant to be the first online Arabic Serbian um, dictionary. The project kicked off in the beginning of this year. And it combines two projects or two focuses um, Wiktionary and the Arabic language. And um, it involved students from uh, Arabic studies and they built teams and they gathered in the Wikimedia Serbia office. So they could offer a space for them to meet and together. And they um, created words on, uh, on Wiktionary. And if you think, okay, creating a word on Wiktionary, that doesn't take that long, but it really, they really added, uh, added value to that um, by, um, adding synonyms and grammar and everything. So it took them really 20 to 40 minutes to cover each word. And they said that it's quite necessary to, to take that time. And um, they, are not the, they are not only creating these, these articles, but also doing different other things that come up uh, during the project, like for example, adjusting templates 
or providing dictionary guidelines which they found useful for their work and then again shared with the world, of course. And they are also uh, writing or um, editing Wikipedia articles about uh, Arabic grammar. And they had the first internal event, which was also more to motivate people to, to, to work on the project when they hit the 101st word. And it's, uh, it's a nice um, example of how chapters can su support the communities um, in doing these things online. And the tip was really to, to have uh, quality over quantity. Like I said, it really takes time to do this, uh, to do this right. Now we are flying over to the UK, where the UK chapter held the EduWiki conference in, I think it was in, in the end of last year. And it was a, yeah, a one and a half day conference in the University of Leicester. And it uh, had an international scope, though, so it did not have uh, people from, from the UK and from the UK chapter, but also from the foundation and from other chapters around the world. And um, it also uh, had a mixture of target groups, so they were talking to or there were like 50% of the people attending were educators and 30% were Wikimedians. So it really got people together who are working on those projects from different perspectives. And um, they, one outcome was that they created a paper um, about how scholars can work more openly, so how they can pr contribute. And um, what they came up with is, first of all, that table tennis is a quite good uh, thing to do during conferences. <laughs> and also that it, uh, if you are working together with these different kinds of target groups or audiences, that it's important to offer mm -hmm. optional Wikipedia introduction so that pe if people really want to know more about Wikipedia, then they can have like short workshops or introductions and people should really be there to help them understand how we work on these, in these fields. Wikiars Yukakdos is a project by, <laughs> we were practicing the, the name all the time, the uh, project by uh, uh, Wikimedia Amical and um, Wikimedia Spain. So Wikiars was initiated by Amical in 2011 and um, from that evolved a pilot, pilot project Yukakdos in two, uh, 2013, which, was organi which is organized by Wikimedia Spain uh, and the University of Cadiz. There were seven students who were busy creating um, multi, um, media or multimedia, create, um, multimedia files or 3D animations, mostly using Blender software. I don't know if you probably know this software uh, or you probably know the cute movies uh, the Blender team released were like uh, Big Bug Bunny or so. They are all also released on the free license. But, um, and in this project, the, they used um, this software, for example, they built upon existing content. Like there, there were images, for example, on comments about the continental uh, shifts and they used these images to create any 3D animations. It's probably a bit hard to show here, but it really, it shows the continental shift and how earthquakes develop and volcanoes and everything. And yeah, they, the, the teachers or the Wikipedians um, were made aware, or no, the, the students were made aware of how important it is or how great it is that you can really build upon existing uh, materials and that you can, uh, that it is good to promote that there, there are free licenses, which uh, free material which you can build upon and then again, of course, release the, the things, the remixes and mashups that you made um, also, of course, under a free license. And then we are, now we are in Russia, where Wikimedia Russia um, initiated the Wikipedia Insight courses. That is a project um, they are doing together with the Open University in Skolovo. And they were, um, they held seven, seven whole lectures and several workshops, which were all, uh, also videotaped. And they created like 15 hours of uh, video material, which is all on YouTube, which you can all uh, see there. And um, they, they did these, these lectures not only for students on site, but thought uh, how they can, they can reach a broader audience. And um, so they yeah, like recorded it and put it online. 
and uh, said that it's not only for like students who probably already know about Wikipedia, but also for newcomers who, who really need an introduction into Wikipedia. And it requires little resources. You only need to do one lesson and you have to film it and then can put it up online and uh, spread it. And the, the contents were mm. yeah, like different, like basis, uh, basic rules of Wikipedia and how to write articles, but also other topics which go more into details. And we've checked the YouTube page and they had like 400 views per video. And so if you uh, wanna have a look as well, then these views might probably even double up. So um, yeah, like I said, it's not only uh, useful for p persons on site, but also for newcomers who, who watch the videos. And if we would have more time, we would probably show the two hour sessions there. Um, then there's the next project also organized by Wikimedia Israel and since it is an online course we um, we decided to to not uh, use an image of scri uh, scribble which I uh, was first thinking about to do but uh, a, f a picture of the, the teacher that is doing these courses and um, it is a collaboration uh, with the Ministry of Education in Israel and they're doing classes about Wikipedia and record and stream them. They're streaming them live online. And um, the, the target group are sixth, uh, sixth graders. So they are in the, at the age of 11 to 12 and they, uh, Wikimedia Israel says that uh, they are too young for editing, but it's never too, too early to get people used uh, to Wikipedia and to, tr um, to uh, probably have them have them be active on talk pages or get to know the rules and everything so that you prepare the future editors which uh, will, yeah, which might uh, join Wikipedia a few years later. And in, in 2012, they really, they had uh, three, three events and 150 classes really attended these these um, sessions, they really attended them all live on site. Li so they reached uh, 23,000 students with, these, with this program in 2012. And uh, although it's a quite huge number, they figured out that it's probably better to not to, to, um, to reach out to so many people because um, they, they, they can also ask questions during the, during the sessions via chat or so and you cannot deal with that many people in so, so less, less time. So they scaled it down a little bit to 24 classes per unit this year, and they are still uh, continuing, continuing and further developing it. Yes. And now we are uh, um, flying over to, to Africa, where Wikipedia Online, uh, Afripedia, which is a project from Wikimedia France, uh, France, which, <laughs> hello, <laughs> you, b b uh, you are always uh, free to make yourself seen if you, uh, if it's one of your projects, of course, so. That is very African. <laughs> um, it, uh, it's a, it is a project which involved uh, the uh, 13 French-speaking countries in Africa, and it was a collaboration with the Agence Universitaire de la Francophonie and the Institut Francais. <laughs> and um, it was um, a train the trainers thing. So um, there were the universities paid their, the trainers that, that uh, took part in a five day training. And this training uh, consisted of two parts. The first part is the uh, how to get offline access to Wikipedia via Kivix. So it involved uh, the, the technical stuff to, to set up the, um, yeah, the equipment to, to, have, to be working with Wikipedia offline. And also to, uh, the second part was to train people how to edit and how to work with Wikipedia and how to contribute. And um, I mean, we can, cannot really imagine how it is uh, without the internet, so, um, but the, the universities in, in Africa, they, they um, have, they have an, an, at least an offline Wi-Fi and, 
I thought was offline Wi-Fi, what does it mean? But probably in the 90s, 90s we would have said it's like an intranet. So it is a network within the university, but it's not connected to the outside world or the internet. And this uh, network is used to install QWICs on there and dis distribute it to the different classes. And um, this project got a uh, very nice press and uh, blog coverage, of nice attention. And um, the tip was really to think ahead. So prepare future uh, onliners for, edi for editing Wikipedia now already. And then another Wikipedia offline project, he works in jail, which really also got a quite a big of uh, quite a little bit of in um, attention. It's also f uh, Wikipedia without internet because, as you can probably imagine, in jail it's quite hard to to go online. And um, Wikimedia Switzerland worked to, uh, teamed up with the Bellevue Prison in Gorier, and uh, this is a prison with has, which has a capacity capacity of 65. Uh, prisoners and 36 of those have access to a computer or and um, oh no is it right? Yeah, 36 occupants. Ah oh no, 36. Uh, uh, there are 36 prisoners in the in the prison and uh, 18 of them have uh, access to uh, to a computer and all of them agreed to take part in this in this project and Wikimedia um, Swiss now is, uh, has helped them to to install Kiwix on, the, on their network and they are now able to, to edit, no, to, to access Wikipedia. And um, they also gained quite an interest, quite a nice uh, coverage and press because you can believe if it's the headline Wikipedia in jail, then everyone uh, thinks, oh, is there another wiki scandal or what's happening there? But it's a project to, <laughs> uh, like, it's more like an education project, program in, in jail. So um, while, uh, while uh, Wikimedia Switzerland was uh, concerned about people who were very much locked up, Wikimedia Israel took it the, to the other extreme. They were going to try to explore the air. And um, of course, I mean, I think, who, who in this room, I mean, you're, you're lots of photographers I see, I mean, wouldn't you love to make some air photos? I mean, wouldn't you love to do that? I mean, that is one of the, the really most awesome things to do as a photographer. I mean, I'm not a photographer, but I still would like to take my small, tiny camera and, I mean, that, that's like the most cool thing to do. And for at least, definitely for the participants. So they collaborated with the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. And these people, uh, they have uh, lots of pilots associated and they often have a free seat on their light plane. Well, you can imagine this is one of these planes that are uh, having one engine and they are uh, a bit shaky, perhaps, uh, not, not unsafe, I've been told, but um, a bit uh, uh, more susceptible to air. Um, and, and, well, this empty seat can be very helpful for a wiki photographer. So what they did is they, uh, they asked this association, are there pilots that would like to volunteer to take a Wikipedian with them on their trip? Um, and they did so. So the Wikipedian um, was allowed to uh, sit on the empty seat, take lots of aerial photos, um, which you can see, um, however, under, under a few conditions. I mean, you're not allowed to make requests. We all know Wikipedians, they always want something more. They always want that little extra step. Oh, can you just take a 10 kilometer detour so that I can make a nicer photo of that? Well, that's not gonna happen. I mean, if every time you take a detour, then the pilot will be very exhausted of you. Um, so far, five people were, uh, have been able to take, uh, to take this opportunity and uh, make some really nice photos. Uh, 1,500 of them, this, are, uh, this is just a selection. And what I especially liked about it um, is that you can really sometimes see the structure of a city from this kind of photos. I mean, this is not what you can get from a map. You cannot get it from a regular photo. You see the shape of the city, you see the high buildings, the smaller buildings. It's really hard to catch this on an, in a different way for the encyclopedia, to explain what the city really looks like, what the structure is like. Um, however, another condition is, and that's actually pretty good, I think, for, uh, for the quality in the end, is that if you want to go on such an airplane, you shouldn't be too quickly airsick. Well, kind of obvious. Um, also uh, nice for the photographer, I guess. 
and um, you have to take a course in aerial photography. Um, so that, that course is being sponsored, I heard, so that's, uh, that's actually wonderful. I think Wikipedians would love to learn that as well, uh, how, how you can take nicer pictures from an airplane. Um, but that's, uh, I think that's a great project. And in Ukraine, they took it yet to another, uh, another version of unexplored territory. Um, maybe some of, some of you still remember, I'm not sure how many uh, were around back then, but in uh, 1986 there was, uh, there was a tiny explosion in, uh, in Ukraine, <laughs> a minor accident, um, and uh, well, it was a nuclear accident, and that uh, basically had as a result that there was a whole zone uh, which is still uh, not really accessible, the, Ch the Chernobyl exclusion zone. And, um, well, in Ukraine, they have been organizing wiki expeditions for a while now. Uh, I'm not sure how many exactly, but uh, quite a few. And this is one of them in that series. And they decided to go to this zone um, with permission and uh, take a professional tour guide. And uh, 30 Wikipedians thought uh, this was uh, kind of exciting. Uh, also, people from other countries, they came all the way to Ukraine to just join this wiki expedition. Uh, made it into an international event, and you can see that you can get quite unique photos of an area that has not been touched by human hand for, uh, for almost uh, 30 years. And their tip was, um, well, basically use that name of Wikipedia, use that power that we have to open the doors that, we ha that, that are still closed because people are very much willing to do something extra for you, to walk a little bit harder if you tell them this is for Wikipedia, this is for the website that, you use every, that your child uses every day to copy his homework from. In Austria, they, uh, they had uh, also a photography program, but in a very different way. They focused on, um, on um, empowering volunteers in all possible thinkable ways. Um, they organized photo workshops to, um, to enhance their photos themselves. They, uh, they provide them with high-end equipment on, le on loan, so that if they want to go to an event where they can really have a good opportunity to make photos, that they can do that with the best possible equipment available. They uh, provide them with accreditation, with travel costs, so that they can actually go there without uh, paying for it themselves. Um, that way they can get to, into sports events and, uh, for example, make photos that are uh, not always as easy to make from, uh, from the Tribune. Is that actually English? I don't know. Um, they can get portraits for, from politicians and they try to provide a volunteer support in as an unbureaucratic way as possible. Um, they try to do that in a way so that it's actually fun to request something and you don't have to fill, uh, well, a whole, uh, a whole lot of forms for it. And also they try to give a door opener for glam institutions so you can get into museums in a way that you can actually uh, see the pieces uh, the best possible way. Their tip is to make sure that photos are tagged and categorized um, so that you, can, you are able to monitor what happens with the photos. How many times are they being viewed? Um, what, uh, in which articles are they being used, etc. And of course there is a program that's being executed by many chapters and we've received several applications like, hey, this is one of the cool projects we have been doing. Um, uh, minor notes, I've been involved with this as well. Wikilos Monuments is an international photo competition, but it is mostly being organized in separate countries. So I will show you a few examples of it. Um, it's the largest, together, it's the largest photography competition in the world, also recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records. And it has more than, last year, more than 350,000 uh, images were submitted by more than 15,000 people. Of those 15,000, about 10,000 were new, so it's a really interesting way to get more people aboard. And as you can see, th uh, 35 countries, and uh, 33 of them uh, participated officially, but 35 countries participated in this, and you see that it's really a nice spread all over the world, probably not accidentally covering many chapter countries as well. Um, and uh, every country then sent 10 images to an international jury. Basically, that's the most important part of the international thing. But let's take a look at some of the national competitions. 
So for example, Canada. In Canada, they have 12,000 monuments spread all over the country. They <laughs> Was that Benoit? <laughs> Uh, this time, they also have some monuments in the English-speaking part of Canada, I think. Um, they have only 20% of these monuments have a photo. I mean, that is, that is really sad, or at least had before the competition. Um, so they provided three national prizes. The competition was organized both in French and English so that everybody could understand it and participate. And they got more than 5,000 submissions. You see that Canadians, I mean, it was really weird. I was looking at these 10 winners of Canada, and there were like five or six bridges in there. They have something with bridging the gap, or I don't know. <laughs> Another one was organized in South Africa, the other side of the world almost. And it was organized together with the agency responsible for recognizing monuments, uh, which gave them a great way to reaching out to people. Um, it gave them also a lot of credibility, but this agency required them to also organize events all over the country. I think originally in every province they had to organize an event just to make sure that it's well spread and that there not one part of the country is being uh, held over the other part. Um, they, had, they got 1,800 photos, which sounds compared to Canada maybe not so much, but you should realize that in Africa, the tradition of making lots of photos is very different, and also the equipment is less well available. Uh, so in South Africa, I think this is a very wonderful result, uh, given the circumstances. Um, they also had three quality prizes, but also a quantity prize, which, uh, in a which motivates people to also take lots of photos of uh, monuments. So it's both quality and quantity aspect. Their tip, tip is to, tell the to think in front what you want the jury to look for in a winning picture. Because they had lots of discussions in the jury, is this important, is that more important? They say, well, it's really important that you think about it in advance. Not so much the exact answer, but at least have an agreement on that. And the third example is Italy, probably the country that had the hardest time organizing Wikilos monuments. Um, because they had a few challenges. First of all, they didn't have any lists of monuments. They didn't know what the monuments are in their country. Because in Italy, the definition of a monument is anything older than 50 years. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure who has ever been to Rome, but if you look around, there, is, there are some things that are older than 50 years. Quite a few. However, they have also freedom of panorama. That means that no, no building younger than 70 years can be a, can, a photo can be published of. Well, that's okay. Well, that's, that happens in more countries, right? Not very, really exceptional. But they also have a law that says you cannot publish any photos of a monument, which means every building older than 50 years. You have to ask permission from the government for that. So they had to work on a solution, make a framework uh, agreement with the ministry. You can ask all about it uh, to the Italians, which are walking around. They can provide you with all the funny details. Um, but they got 7,000 photos out of it. I think that is, in the end, the most important thing. They organized a very successful competition. Um, and uh, were able actually to cover all their whole budget with sponsor money, including a project manager, including everything. So I think that is also a wonderful result in itself. Well, because Wikilos Monuments took off so successfully in the past few years, there have been two, at, at least two spin-offs, uh, basically, which were trying to do the same concept, but for a different topic. In Ukraine, they organize Wikilov's Earth. Uh, it's a national competition where they, instead of focusing on buildings, they focus on natural heritage. They focus on forests, on lakes, on all kind of naturally, nationally recognized uh, uh, nature. And they got 11,000 images out of that um, with, uh, from three, more than 300 participants. And uh, they had also uh, ver some very nice sponsorships. I think they, uh, they really liked that. Uh, but they also got uh, prizes which were really applicable to the topic. For example, they got a, a traditional dress, but also a solar mobile charger uh, and some other green-oriented prizes, which gives uh, a nice touch uh, to the whole. Uh, their tip is to find cool sponsors for cool prizes for a cool project. Okay, so if you want to know more about organizing that in your country, definitely get in touch.
In, uh, from Sweden out, they organized Wikilos Public Art, which is, again, yet another, uh, another scope. And it was a photo contest based on public, uh, public domain works of art. Um, and they organized it this year in five countries already, in the first year, I think. Um, and they focused mainly on the major cities. 75% uh, of all listed works now have a uh, photo, uh, which is, I think, a very, uh, very nice result, because it means there is a very good coverage of, uh, of these important uh, works of art. Uh, 225 people participated, and uh, I, their, uh, their idea is that this is really a nice way to reach a new group of volunteers, people who originally never edited Wikipedia, never made a photo. They take this opportunity to submit photos to help Wikipedia grow to the next level. And also, as an outcome of Wikilas Monuments, uh, there was in the Netherlands a collaboration with the Rijksdienst voor Cultural Erfgoed. They already supported Wikilas monuments, um, but during that, uh, those conversations, uh, we realized that uh, they are, uh, while they are responsible for recognizing monuments, they uh, make big dossiers when they are recognizing them in the process, and those dossiers contain lots of photos. So what they did in the end is uh, these photos, they they. Uh, donated the whole set of 550,000 photos. Um, some of them are monuments, some of them didn't become a monument, they are maybe demolished or um, they uh, turned into a whole different building. Um, and uh, with the metadata, some of the photos are 50 years old, some of them are uh, much more recent. Um, and then the, the task is to connect the buildings to the images to identify what is exactly on the image. There are some hints in the metadata, like there is an address, but the address might have changed in the past 50 years. Uh, there might be geographic coordinates, but they might not be as exact as we would like them to be. So that's, uh, that's a task that volunteers took upon themselves. You can imagine 500,000 articles, that's, uh, that's a pretty big number. Um, so the, the tip of the, of the Dutch uh, Wikimedia chapter was to uh, definitely focus on getting a lot of metadata with your photos. If you get a photo donation, try to get a lot of metadata so that you can actually identify what is on the photo and you can actually use the photos in Wikipedia. This one is a project um, by Wikimedia Armenia. I think I have seen Susanna sitting over there as well. <laughs> Um, they have received a content donation for Wikisource, which contained uh, 13 volumes of the Armenian Soviet, Soviet Encyclopedia. And uh, the first thing they, that they also had to do was to arrange an agreement on free licenses. So uh, to, the, um, to um, convince them to the, how important or how good it is and how. Um, to release your, your content under, under a free license and that how uh, people can then reuse it. And um, they had one administrator who scanned all those uh, 13 volumes of the encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> and it was then digitized via OCR. And uh, you can see here the different, different pages and editions. And, um, how the original looked like in uh, compared to the looks like compared to the wikified text and um, uh, the good thing is that this project involved uh, Wikipedians and newcomers because there are several smaller tasks which uh, also newcomers can take if they got a bit a bit, little bit of a training by Wikipedians. Oh no, that was the wrong direction. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a project by Wikimedia Chile, as you might have pro probably already noticed. Um, it is, <laughs> it is um, about the offic um, official speeches by Salvador Allende, and he was the president of Chile in the 1970s, and I was told that he was like a political hero for a lot of people in South America. And the project was to scan, upload, and uh, transcript the, his official uh, 
speeches. It was a, a joint project with the with the with the foundation of Salvador Allende, and in the first pilot pilot project, this foundation donated ten out of his speeches. Uh, they were then uploaded on com comments and volunteers created the articles on Wikisource and uh, corrected and validated them. And uh, the important thing about it is because we think, okay, speeches is what's uh, the, the special, special thing about it, is that um, most of his, or really a lot of his speeches have been destroyed or they are missing or no one really knows wh what happened to them. And if there are transcripts, uh, transcripts or translations, they are not very exact. So, and I think with uh, political speeches, it's very sometimes very important to to really get the uh, feeling of what he's talking about. And this some uh, often got lost. And now it, um, they have created the exact. Uh, th these are the ex exact transcriptions, and that really helps to better understand and um, preserve these things. And they are also planning to use these uh, speeches on, uh, to create subtitles for, for um, films of, the, uh, of his speeches. And then we have a project from Wikimedia Italy. Are you here as well? Um, they have created a mailing list. And first you might think, okay, mailing list, but um, this mailing list was to, to get librarians and Wikipedians into constant touch so that they could exchange ideas and things um, um, topic related and topic, um, they, they were talking about trainings and Wikidata and data sets and the real need, the real need for this mailing list came up when there were rumors about uh, that uh, it Italy is about to close the identifier system and then they, they said, thought, okay, we need to uh, unionize or organize us and um, the mailing list first was very quite silent and then it, they really used it to create, to come up with solutions and alternatives and um, are now doing training courses together and Im import the identifiers to Wikidata. And um, yeah, they have a constant touch with, the, with those libraries and they really, they said that the tip is uh, building bridges. So you see in C Canada, they fo take, take photos of bridges and in Italy, they use mailing lists to build bridges. So probably a combination between those two projects. Um, then we have another uh, a project from South Africa, which is Geobopedia. It's one of the Metropedia uh, projects and it's, um, uh, project of we, the city of Johannesburg and the Johannesburg Heritage Foundation. And they are uh, using these plugs with QR codes and putting them right next to the like normal blue plug which is used in South Africa to give information about the, the respective monuments. And um, they have up to now put up um, 12 plugs and have have uh, held several editing events. And I don't know if all of you know how QRPDA works. It is like a QR code that you scan with your mobile phone and then it leads you to the Wikipedia article uh, um, relating, related to this, the, the monument or the, the, the building. And it um, recognizes from the language of which your phone uses and which, which language of the article it shows you. So it will always show you the, the article in your mother or favorite language. Tatupedia is also uh, one of those Metropedia projects. Uh, Tatu is the second biggest city of Estonia and they, um, uh, Wikimedia Estonia managed to um, create a framework collaboration with the local institutions and they got inspired by Monmouthpedia and um, they came up with Tatu 100 which is a list of articles. Is it right? Yes. A list of um, a, the li a list of the most important uh, uh, monuments in Tartu which really need to be um, covered in Wikipedia and which need to be covered by QR codes. And as you can see, uh, Wikimedia Estonia was involved. You might not uh, recognize Raul because he has got a new haircut. Is he here as well? I don't know if you have probably already seen him. And um, they did the contest mostly online because they are all very good, very well connected. Had a few meetups and they organized smaller content uh, contests 
which dealt with theater history or liter literature history or a 95 year, five year Estonia photography competition. Um, and then Wikimedia Switzerland, I think I've seen someone of you here. Yes, hello. And um, they, have, um, they have a Wikipedia in residence in the Federal Archives uh, since uh, from uh, starting in this July until the end of the year. And uh, the Wikipedia in residence, I don't know if you're all uh, familiar with this, uh, with this concept. It's uh, someone who, who works for a sec uh, certain period of time in a, in a cultural institution. He, he does not edit Wikipedia himself, but he really trains the staff and people involved there how to uh, edit Wikipedia. And uh, on the other way, on the other hand, he also advises Wikipedians how to use the archives and how to use the archives in creating new articles. The, the focus of this project is World War I, and uh, the goal is to have at least uh, 5,000 photos um, released under free license on Commons. And they are not uh, only focusing on photos, but also on text. And they say that they uh, are aiming for high quality uh, in this project. And they, are, they said, they gave the tip that it, you really need, need to be patient when working together with, um, with these institutions and uh, you don't have to push, push them, they must believe in it. So it's sometimes better to just wait and see and sometimes they then finally realize that it's a good idea and then they come and approach you if, you, if they want to do this project. And now I'm handing over again to Lodewijk. We have a few more left, we're almost done. Um, this is uh, Bibliothèque 4, Bibliothèque 4. Um, it's a, well, the CAT, of course, refers to Catalan. It's a project organized by Wikimedia, uh, Amakal Wikimedia. And it's, again, a collaboration uh, with uh, the Ministry of Culture, but especially with a network of libraries. So instead of working together with one institution at a time, they try to collaborate with the whole network. And um, to do that, they had, have found a very interesting method uh, because they, instead of off going to every institution, every library, and offer, telling them, we want, with you, we want to do a Wikipedia residence. With you, we want to do, uh, we want to uh, have a content donation. And with you, we want to do a Wikitakes a City. They offer them a a la carte menu. They just give them a list of projects and they say, well, these are the projects, this is how it works. And you can choose, you can see what works the best in your institution. Come to us, tell us what, we, what you want to do with us. And this works pretty well. These are the examples, I will not read them out to you. Um, but uh, you can uh, find a lot more about it in the URL, uh, which is uh, linked uh, as well. And they want to give a long-term relationship this way. They try to, um, to really get in touch with them over a longer period of time. And one of the projects in this list took my uh, attention because I never heard of that before. It's the Wiki Reading Club. Um, it's, uh, it's still being developed, but uh, their idea is that they pick a topic, um, and they, a very specific topic, and they ask the library to provide a number of books for, on that topic, non-fictional, of course, and uh, to give every Wikipedian in the reading club one of these books, and then the Wikipedian will read the whole book, and they will improve the articles related to this topic based on the information in that book. And then at the end of the meeting, when every, when like the five or the ten Wikipedians in that group all have improved those articles to a very high standard, because you have, you have used five very big reference works to improve that, those articles, uh, they will meet again together and they will discuss their experiences. They will discuss how these different points of view uh, inflict on each other and how, uh, how this works, and they will be joined by an expert in that meeting. Uh, the expert will try to give a little bit of nuance. They will try to, get, uh, to bring the, 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 the connections between the views, etc. So I think this is really nice, uh, a nice touch. In the US, um, they, after the, the Glenn meeting last year in the UK, uh, the US came up with the idea of organizing a Glenn boot camp. The idea is not so much to have a very specific collaboration, but to enable future collaborations in a much more effective way. The, the idea was to train Wikipedians in a better way 
to become uh, a, an effective liaison with a cultural institution, to give them the skill set they needed to negotiate, to explain, to present, etc. Um, so you're basically training the trainers. Uh, they provide them with all the means they needed to come to Washington, to follow the workshop, and to be as effective as possible. Um, it's, it's, uh, and that way, uh, they try to, uh, to get rid of the bottlenecks in our uh, GLAM wiki collaborations, because there are some very specific skills we have very, we, that are very rare in our movement, and uh, this is a way of getting rid of those bottlenecks. Their tip is to, uh, to have this kind of boot camps not bigger than 15 people, at least to make sure that you can, give, you can give people the attention they need to actually get to the bottom of things. Uh, uh, also, there was the chapters meeting, which is, of course, another way of sharing experiences. The chapters come together. Um, this year it was in Milan, and there were also other uh, affiliation, affiliate organizations present. And they were uh, trying to transfer knowledge to each other and try to learn from each other uh, in the most effective way. What is the best way to organize a project? What is the best way to collaborate with institutions? What is the best way to do things? Uh, besides just explaining and discussing, they also had some team building exercises to make sure they can communicate better in the long term, uh, including the famous egg dropping, where they had to um, figure out a way to drop an egg for f from four stories high without, um, well, breaking the shell. But of course, there is the biggest, the coolest, and the hardest to organize project always. I mean, Wikimania is awesome. It's being organized every year, and this year we are here in Hong Kong. I don't have to, you, to explain to you what it is, because you're right in it, but I think it's really important to realize how much work it involves. Um, it's a very th a thorough uh, bidding process that, chapter, that uh, the organizers have to go through. Even the bidding process on itself is awesome if you get through that. Just making a bid is an amazing amount of work that you cannot uh, realize without doing it. Um, it's a tradition since 2005. It has traveled the world. And uh, it's, uh, hundreds of volunteers come together. I've been told that this uh, weekend they expect about 1,000 people. Um, so I really look forward to meeting all these people, well, at least a big part of them. Um, of course, the, the biggest thing is uh, to share experiences. And um, just to give an indication how hard it is to organize uh, and how cool it can be uh, to be here. Just before the conference, uh, well, some weeks before the conference, the, the local team was kind of panicking, like, hey, we don't have enough volunteers to run this thing. I mean, we really need more help. So what they did is they placed an, uh, an advertisement on a very popular forum. And, um, well, help they got. The, the, Hong, Kong the Hong Kong people uh, came to the rescue, and hundreds of volunteers, literally hundreds of volunteers, came to help out and um, offered their services. And that's, uh, that kind of, yeah, that's... But it does kind of create a different problem because now the team was panicking how to handle so many different volunteers working together. <laughs> but I think it is really awesome and um, I hope that uh, they will uh, have a wonderful conference and also are able to visit one of the sessions themselves. Now it's, um, it's time to ask your opinion. I'm not sure how many people stayed awake the whole lecture. <laughs> it's always hard. But um, I'm, I'm going, going to try to ask your opinion, because um, in the end, the whole purpose of this, uh, of this, of this uh, discussion and of this uh, session was to get inspired. So we have five different, um, five different uh, projects that we selected that we think were the most inspirational. And we're going to ask your opinion. If, make as much noise as possible if you think that the, that the one that's, uh, that will come up is, the cool, is, is really cool. Just make the amount of noise that you think is appropriate for that cool project. We have an applause-o-meter applause over, sitting over there, so, yeah. <laughs> don't tell where it is, then they shout in that direction. <laughs> okay, so the first one. Bibliothek How many decibels was there? 80. 
Möbius radio program. This is so unfair. <laughs> How much is that? 86. Vicky Avia. <laughs> and 95. Wow. Can we can we top that? I don't know if we even can top that. And we can lost Earth. <laughs> 90. 90. And finally, the writing boot camp in Taiwan. <laughs> 75. So I think, what was the result? The highest was? 95. I think so. Figi Avir. So thank you very much all for listening. We do have, I think, we can make a little bit of time because, well, the next is the lunch break. So that's always very hard to compete with. But we do have time for questions. So if you have a question, please stand up, raise your hand, wave, jump. We, we have about two minutes of discussion. Anyone needs the microphone to have a... Yes, thank you. I just have a small question. What is the main difference between a chapter and a group? Because uh, in, my, in my country, I, I come, come from Costa Rica, and it's very difficult to find editors. Where right now, where are like two active editors in, in the whole Spanish Wikimedia projects? Uh, but it is quite hard to make mm -hmm. uh, a chapter in Costa Rica. So what, is, uh, what should be the goal of a group? How can we expand? A group is usually a little bit more specific, and it's usually smaller, and it's more informal. Mostly informal is really the big difference. So a chapter is more formal, is more, uh, is, it has been founded as a real organization. A user group doesn't have to be. I suggest if you have more, more technical or detailed questions, that you visit the, the, the affiliations committee booth at the chapters, uh, chapters, chapters Plaza. Village. village. Ah, Plaza sounds much more fancy. The no, Chapters Plaza. Chapters Village. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and that's, but there are also uh, different chapters that have their booths there. So if you have questions to other chapters, also very good to, uh, to visit. Right, thank you. Hey, uh, I would like just to thank Lodovic wow. and Nicole for this awesome session because I think like every year for two years or three years, uh, this is one of the most inspiring sessions. So thank you for all the work and reaching out to all the chapters, bugging us for weeks to get the coolest <laughs> projects. All right, so I thank you for the last comment. I think this is, has to be the end of this uh, session here. But we're, everyone, please do feel free to go out and enjoy our lunch and have further discussion because we have to be prepared for the next session. So I need to have everyone just walk nicely out there and enjoy the sunshine and the, brunch and the lunch. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And, and thank you, our speakers, too. Big applause. Which one do you want? Thank you. I just zoom into whatever you want, so that's okay. I mean, it's a Prezi. It's, it's public as well.